I think that I think that uh, that uh, I think our, I look to my colleagues in New York. Some of them have different views on the subject. It's up to them to work it out. Uh, but there is no question uh, that uh, uh, there is a concerted effort to make this a political issue by some. And I join uh, the uh, those who have called for looking into how is this opposition to the mosque being funded. How is this being ginned up that here we are talking about Treasure Island, something we've been working on for decades, something of great interest to our community as we go forward to an election about the future of our country and two of the first three questions are about a zoning issue in New York City. Can you regret something into the Islamic Center? The answer is no regrets. I don't see a problem with that. I feel that certainly uh, the project is well within its constitutional rights to pursue uh, the current site that, that they are planning for their project and that perhaps they don't want an alternative. Perhaps they want to stay where they are and that's uh, their fundamental right. I think this is what the president has articulated. I think this is what the Constitution articulates, and therefore, uh, I, you know, I just feel that they perhaps uh, decided that they want to go forward, and so they're not looking for an alternative. It's not funny. It's not funny. We got Pelosi exposing her Mussolini-like attitudes, saying uh, that in her opinion, anyone who opposes the mosque should be investigated by the United States government. Not one word from the illegitimate. Uh, mentally disordered left about this so-called McCarthyism coming out of this harebrained Speaker of the House. Not one word from civil libertarians about the dangers of the Speaker of the House, third in uh, the line of succession, demanding that 70% of Americans be investigated by the federal government because they oppose the building of a foreign-funded mosque on the cemetery grounds of Ground Zero. Nancy Pelosi should be forced to resign as a result of this, but there's much more to be said about Obama's alliance with the Islamists on this project. This has developed to an extent that you wouldn't believe. Uh, Obama the other day said Islam has always been part of America. When I uh, heard that on the show and played it, I said, what, is, what part of America is he talking about? And there's an amazing story about Obama's distortions from the beginning to the end. The fact of the matter is we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about how you feel about Nancy Pelosi wants New York City mosque opponents investigated. We're going to talk about who Mahdi Bray is, the head of the American Muslim Society, and ask ourselves why a former felon is being taken seriously uh, by the American vermin leftist media that will not even ask themselves why they're listening to a former felon who put a skull cap on and now is suddenly a spokesman for the American Muslim Society. Why don't they look into the man's jail time? You talk about this country? What country are you talking about when there is no opposition party? Can you name one Republican? Can you name one leader on the Republican side who has had the balls to stand up and be counted on this issue? The biggest shame of them all. The number one and biggest shame. And why I predict, by the way, that the Republicans, I'd say it's 50-50 that they will lose, not only... Uh, the lies they're telling you that they're going to win a big sweep come November. I will tell you that because the Republicans are supine on this Muslim mosque issue, I tell you right now, they're not going to have the victory parades that you are expecting in November. That's number one. Number two, I told you, do not discount Barack Obama. He knows where his money comes from. He knows that the money that put him in power came from the same sources that will put that mosque over the graves of the dead at Ground Zero, and he has bet again that they will support him all over again. And so don't underestimate Obama, not when the money will be flowing in from Saudi Arabia and maybe even Iran. So let's go into the issue itself, the Ground Zero Mosque. Yesterday on the Savage Nation, I reported that an educated Muslim, a man who runs Al Arabiya Television, came out saying that we should not build a mosque. I don't know where the article went on michaelsavage.com. It was the most important article I had, but apparently it got disappeared by my uh, webmaster. Here it is. I got, got buried underneath a picture of a toilet bowl and a, a bar of soap. Here it is. But it should be moved up. You shouldn't miss this article because it was taken down soon after I announced it on the Savage Nation. Arab TV director says the Ground Zero Mosque would be a monument for terrorists. The director of Al Arabiya TV, a popular Arab language news station, wrote that, quote, Muslims never asked for the proposed mosque at Ground Zero 
and, quote, do not care about its construction. In a column for the London Daily Al Shark Al Awad on August 16th, he wrote it in Arabic, by the way. And although I do not read Arabic, I can read an English translation. But apparently, the only thing that Mayor Bloomberg could read are restaurant menus. But the director of Al Arabiya TV went on. Remember now, you're listening to the words of a Muslim, an educated Muslim, not a former jailhouse operant who suddenly found God inside the prisons and came out with the most militant form of Islam you could ever imagine. Here is what an educated, moderate Muslim had to say again. Muslims never ask for the proposed mosque and do not care about its construction. I can't imagine that Muslims actually want a mosque at this particular location because it will become an arena for the promoters of hatred and a monument to those who committed the crime, he wrote. Now listen to the rest of this. Moreover, there are no practicing Muslims in the area who need a place to worship because it is a commercial district. Is there anyone who is really eager to build this mosque? Now what's amazing to me is that this has been lost uh, from the dialogue, and that's because the radical left-wing press in America, which hates Christians, hates Christianity, hates the Bible, is 100% behind the mosque, 100% behind radical Islam. They may as well be working for Al-Qaeda in terms of the positions they're taking, not only on Ground Zero Mo on the Ground Zero Mosque, but virtually on every war that has been fought to try to suppress the forces of oppression and hatred around the globe. This is the Savage Nation. I'm sure you have strong opinions on this issue. The phone number is 1-800-449-8255. Now, I want to go back to our first Islamic president. There is no question that his loyalties do not lie with this country. That's my opinion. Uh, just as the radical left will always wrap itself in the Constitution when they're trying to steal something from us, Obama is no different. Mahadi Bray of the American Muslim Society wraps himself in the Constitution, the very Constitution that I'm sure he would like to destroy once Sharia law is introduced into America, because I want to remind you of something. There is no Constitution there is no progress, there is no justice, there is no tolerance, and there is no dignity for non-Muslims in the Muslim world. Let me be very clear about it. President Obama is lying when he says that the Muslims remind us of the principles. Remember at the uh, Ramadan uh, dinner, here's what he said. This is Obama. The principles of uh, Ramadan, said the president, remind us of the principles that we hold in common, and Islam's role in advancing justice, progress, tolerance, and dignity of all human beings. Obama went on to say Ramadan is a celebration of a faith known for great diversity and racial equality. And here in the United States, Ramadan is a reminder that Islam has always been part of America and that American Muslims have made extraordinary contributions to our country. Not only could it be more wrong, but he's a, the biggest liar to have ever occupied the White House. And unless you stand up and say it like it is, I'm warning you, you're going to lose your country. Now, I want to refer to a ref refutation about Obama's lies when he says that Islam has always been part of America and that American Muslims have made extraordinary contributions to our country. I want to quote from the editorial Obama's Islamic America. What country is he talking about from the Washington Times? I'll read it to you now. That Islam has had a major role in advancing justice, progress, tolerance, and the dignity of all human beings may come as a surprise to Muslim women. Young Afghan girls who are having acid thrown in their faces on the way to school might, might want to offer their perspectives. That Islam is known for diversity and racial equality is also a bit of a reach. This certainly does not refer to religious diversity, which is non-existent in many Muslim-majority states. This is a plaudit better reserved for a speech at the opening of a synagogue in Mecca. Most puzzling is Obama's claim that Islam has always been part of America. Islam had no influence on the origins and development of the United States. It contributed nothing to early American political culture, art, literature, music, or any other aspect of the early nation. Throughout most of American history, the Muslim world was perceived as remote, alien, and belligerent. Perhaps the president was thinking about the Barbary pirates and their role in the founding of the U.S. Navy or Andrew Jackson's dispatch of frigates against Muslim pirates in Sumatra in the 1830s. Maybe Obama was recalling Rutherby Hayes' 1880 statement regarding Morocco on the necessity in accordance with the humane and enlightened spirit of the age of putting an end to the persecutions which have been so prevalent in that country 
of persons of a faith other than the Muslim, and especially of the Hebrew residents of Morocco. Close quote. I wish that we had a president like Brother Brother B. Hayes now. Or how about Grover Cleveland's 1896 comment on the continuing massacre of Armenian Christians? Would you like to hear it, all of you uh, lovers of the Islamists? Here is what Grover Cleveland, a man with guts and brains and an education unlike the dolt in the White House now, said in 1896. We have been afflicted by continued and not infrequent reports of the wanton destruction of homes, and the bloody butchery of, of men, women, and children made martyrs to their profession of Christian faith. It so mars the humane and enlightened civilization that belongs to the close of the 19th century that it seems hardly possible that the earnest demand of good people throughout the Christian world for its corrective treatment will remain unanswered. Close quote. Now, that is because, uh, th- those words are so well written that they would not even be understood by today's Twitter generation. It is also customary in the United States to search for obscure contributions made by in vogue minority groups as a feel-good way of promoting inclusion. But let me give you an example from the Washington Times editorial. One of the earliest Muslims to come to the United States was a 17th century Egyptian named Norsreddin, who settled in the Catskills and was described by one chronicler as, quote, haughty, morose, unprincipled, cruel, and dissipated. Spurned by the princess of an Indian tribe that had befriended him, he managed through a subterfuge to poison her. He was later run down by the betrayed Indians who burned them alive. It's not the kind of tale that makes it into politically correct history books. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be back. Savage. 